Hello there again, and welcome to Hold and Modify. It's Q, host of YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yeah, I made that last video on uh, a really quick and easy way to fire up WinUAE and run uh, an emulated Amiga. And of course, uh, a lot of folks were curious about the Mac. I kind of briefly mentioned you could do it on the Mac, and then you realize that, well, WinUAE doesn't really run on the Mac. You need something else. And I did put a link in the description about FSUAE. And that program, which you see right in front of me here, does allow you to run native Mac ARM Amiga emulation. Now, a fun little sidebar here, if you're still watching. Uh, way back in the day, Macintosh people would actually buy Amiga 3000s with Picasso 2 cards and run a software emulation program called Shapeshifter. And they would do this because it would actually run as fast and sometimes faster than the current offerings from Apple for things like Photoshop and Quark Express and all the various popular Mac programs. So they actually found using the Amiga, they kind of got a two-in-one computer using a software emulator. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And if anyone did that back in the day, please leave a, a note down in the comments. But here we are all these years later, and now we have the Mac software emulating the Amiga. So let's get into it. Uh, we did the 1200 on that WinUAE video over on uh, PC land. So here in the Mac, you download the uh, FSUAE, the ARM version if you have an ARM Mac, or the Intel version if you have an Intel. And then you get your ROMs again through Cloanto or Hyperion, put them in there, you go through the process of updating the files, importing the kickstarts, this kind of stuff. I didn't really walk you through that in the WinUAE video, and I'm not gonna do it here because you'll figure it out. I just wanna make this a quick video like the last one to show you how to do it. And much like WinUEE, you just come over here to the home screen. You can pick the various computers, like a 500 plus. We're gonna go ahead and pick the 1200. It's gonna default, interestingly, to the 3.1 ROM. Uh, 1200 initially came with a 3.0 ROM, and in the WinUEE video, I did use a 3.0 ROM. After that, again, just like before with the WinUEE video, don't, don't worry about any of this stuff. Don't go through here and be like, oh my gosh, look at all these options. Go to your floppy, and then, you can, do a, you can do this a couple ways, because it's a little different than WinUEE. Again, we're not gonna activate all the drives, so we're just gonna leave drive count at one. We're gonna go ahead and pick that floppy. And as you can see here, I've got my ADFs. And we'll go to that install, put it in there, and now we've got our install in there. Now, one of the neat little quirks of this, unlike WinUE where you just smash F12, you're gonna be smashing a different button to bring up the floppy interface. But what you can do is you can create a media swap list where you can kind of preload all the floppies so you don't have to keep coming back to this main interface. So we're gonna go ahead and grab everybody else in here except for the install because we don't need that. Actually, you know what? Let's include it. So now we've got this media swap list. I did that by pressing that plus button. All this is doing is kind of like loading the floppies in the background for you to have access to later, okay? So right now, what have we done? Installed the program, got the ROM scanned in, picked the 1200 preset over here in the home screen, haven't touched anything else. We're just letting it do all of its default. And I went over here to the floppy icon to, floppy icon to illustrate all the floppy options. But if you go back in the home screen, guys, look, You've got access to the floppy drives right here. You don't even have to go anywhere else. You could just live right here. And you got two floppy drives you can pick from right here, okay? But I wanted to show you the floppy because this is where that media swap list is at, right? So now that we've done that, we can just go ahead and hit start. It'll fire up the window, very similar to WinUAE. And here we go. We're clicking away with the install floppy. Well, that's great, Q. You got us into... Uh, our lovely install workbench uh, environment here, but what didn't you do, Q, like you did in the WinUE video? You didn't create a hard drive, you big dummy. All right, so how to quit out of this the most, most quick and easiest way is Command Q, just quits the emulator. So what we need to do is create a hard drive or a hard file like we did in WinUE. Well, unfortunately, it's not just right here where it says something convenient. Like we go to the little hard drive icon here, and we don't see a button like, you know, create hard file like we did in WinUAE. You gotta go over here to the little gizmo over here, a little gadget, okay? You click here, and what do you get? ADF creator, that's your floppy creator. And then you've got HDF creator. So you click that, and we're gonna tell it's a simple little single partition hard drive, okay? And then we're gonna call it, last time in the WinUAE we did 800 megs, we're just gonna leave it at the default of 256. Why? Why not? You can see the save directory, it's defaulting to its config of Q, documents, FSUE, hard drives. And then here you can give it a name and we'll go ahead and call this 
WB Workbench. Actually, no, we called it 1200 on Win UE, so we'll call it 1200. So there we go, we hit Create. So now we've got that, and that's it. That There's nothing, it doesn't auto-mount it or do anything. All you've done is just create that hard file. So again, you start off at home, you pick your preset, you get your floppy, you go to the hard drive thing. Oh my gosh, there's no hard drive, don't panic. Go over here, go to HDF Creator, single partition, give it a name, give it a size, save it somewhere you're gonna remember and create it. Then come over here and click this little folded browse for file button and you go to the hard drives. There's your 1200 HDF that we just created, 268 megabytes. And yes, I've created some other ones here. Click okay. So now we've got that hard drive. So once again, you can smash start. And this time the install floppy is gonna boot and we should see that familiar DH0. And there it is, our DH0 NDOS. So just like before in Menu EE, go ahead and click Format. Call it the same thing, WB. Don't need the trash can. Fast file system, quick format. And format away we go. All right, and so once that comes up and says Workbench, we can click on this. And again, just like before in Win UE, can ignore all this other stuff and just go to Install. Now I'm not gonna show the whole install process again, but what I do wanna show you is how you, you flop the swappies around. Also the floppy disk sounds you're hearing, WinUEE can do those as well. I just had them turned off. One of the other things I haven't done in this run through, I didn't set the floppy speed to turbo like I did in WinUEE. So we're experiencing the real speed of the Amiga floppy drive. I did this on purpose because I wanted some of you to see what the actual real Amiga speeds were. Because some of you asked, wow, you know, seeing the turbo floppy was neat, but that's not really kind of emulating an Amiga accurately. So here in this video, we've turned off the turbo floppy and we're just doing this at regular speed. English, yep, we'll do the American, proceed, and there you go. So it's gonna go through and start copying these files. Now it's asking for that workbench disk. Well, what the heck, how do we do that? You're gonna press the function F12 on your Mac, and that's gonna bring up this FSUEE uh, kind of exchange screen, where you can pause the emulation, save and load states, reset the Amiga, keyboard, mouse, and you get access to your removable media. Now we only have one floppy drive, so you only see the install disk here, but you just highlight it and you click enter and you go find the disk that it wants. Now, why are these disks here? Well, these are here because we preloaded them in that uh, media swap list that I showed you earlier in the video. So if you're a little confused about how these got here, rewind the video, go back and watch that beginning part and that's how these got here. Click workbench and again, you don't have to do anything else. Now, while this is uh, doing this install, I did wanna show you a couple other neat tricks with FSUEE. If you do Command A, that changes the aspect ratio on the fly. So that's a more pleasing looking Amiga aspect ratio, isn't it? That's Command A. Command F will take you right to full screen, which is a lot of fun. So there you go. Probably should have done that at the beginning of the video so you'd enjoy these wonderful Amiga screens better. Uh, there's some other commands you can do, but those are the two um, that you'll use the most. And of course, Command Q quits. So Command A to change aspect and Command F to go in between full screen. There's also a way to enable like warp mode on the fly and turbo modes on the fly. There's a whole host of commands, but you get the idea. You'd run through, get all this installed, boom, you've got your Amiga running on your Mac. And again, to get to that media swap when it asks for the next floppy, it's function F12. Or if you have your Macintosh set to use function keys normally, you just press F12. All right, well, hope you enjoyed this and I hope you Mac guys out there can enjoy the awesomeness of the Amiga as much as all of us guys on Windows do. Thanks for watching.